Hi folks, Andy Kimball here with you one more time. We're going to, uh, well maybe not one more time, probably a few more times, but I don't get to do these that often. So um, I'm uh, taking a break here and uh, doing some recording and um, hitting emails and going to go uh, down the list as I'd said in a previous um, session. Uh, the next tune I'm doing is my interpretation, and I underline that word or emphasize the word interpretation, of a um, Robert Johnson song called Dust My Broom. And that's one of the songs, folks, that I, um, every time I play it, it's a fun song to play. Uh, every time I play it, it's totally on the fly, improv. At that moment, here's how it comes out. Uh, you know, I never get to hear myself play it twice the same way, let alone any audience gets to hear it played twice the same way. And I do that with a lot of my tunes, you know, playing, you know, what, what kind of mood I am, I, am I in? What's the, what's the room like? What's the audience like? What, what kind of energy am I feeling? And I play to that energy. I'm not going to force songs down, you know, make you listen to songs I wrote um, uh, because here's how they go. I like to, to include the audience in my shows and, and really take advantage of whatever that energy is in the room and play to that energy and let that energy grow and communicate with the audience and make a difference in, in the lives of everybody there. And that's what it's all about for me. Uh, but anyway, getting back to the song, uh, Dust My Broom, there's basically, I would say, a, a, a foundation of how I present the tune every time. I can vary that foundation, but uh, the basic foundation is I use a standard a blues progression of E, A, and a B, or B7. And I finger pick it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I use various shapes and figures during that finger picking uh, that kind of gives it the flavor that, I, that I'm trying to present or project. And uh, here's how we started. We're going to first tune your guitar. Here's an E. Alright, so if you need to tune your guitar, I'll wait right here. Go ahead and do that, and um, I'll be back when you're, when you're tuned. So here's your E chord. It should sound something like that, okay? When I start the uh, song, well, God, I start it differently every time. But let's just do it this way for right now. E7 on the 4th fret, and we're going to slide that E7 down every fret till we get to the E on the 1st. So it's like this. You can also take the E7 and put your 3rd finger a fret ahead of it. So I'm on the 5th uh, fret here, your 3rd finger is now on the 6th fret of the D string, and slide that shape down.
like going on. How do we do all that? You're like, uh, yeah, right. Because I actually just go with it. Uh, if I were to sit here and think about it too much, I probably couldn't do it. So we're, we're kind of in the same boat here. Let's figure out how we do it together, okay? Let's figure out how we're going to do that. So we're going to start uh, the tune. Yeah, if I did that walk down, E7, slide it up, slide back, thumb, sixth string. First finger, second fret, A string. Watch how I do this. Fourth fret, A string, second fret, D string. That's a nice little riff by itself. I can remember that. Okay, anyway. Then back. And then when I go to the A, instead of playing an A chord, I'm going to take this shape here. 5th fret, that's how I'm playing my A chord, okay, I was taking the place of the A chord, it's an A shape, I don't like to use the word chord, and I hear myself doing it, I like to use the word shapes, so, that shape is going to replace the typical A shape down here, okay, so here I am. Seventh shape on the first and third strings and move it up to the ninth fret. Slide it down to the seventh fret shape on the fifth fret. So here, here it is. And let's slide it down to the third fret. Now that little riff is E7, and I'm hammering, watch I'm hammering on. E7, then this shape, which is the first finger on the third fret of the G string. First, yeah, first finger on the second fret of the G string, and your third finger on the fourth fret of the A string. Watch how I do this. first finger and I'm barring the, the D string, the D string, the D string. And what shall I do with this? I form like an A minor 7 shape in front of it. So this is what it sounds like. That's all I really do, and again, I play it differently every single time I play it, so, you know, and that's what I expect you to do. Just have fun with the shapes and little, little 
little kind of technique I'm showing you, and little little tricks and tips that I'm uh, you know presenting on the on the guitar. Uh, I'll go over what I just did. I used the E or B7 shape to in the place of the E on the sixth fret one time. Watch this, just like that, and then play a D7 shape, except move it to the fourth fret. So I've got a question and answer kind of thing going. Watch this. Then A, I'm going to form a D shape, move everything up one string. Instead of the um, second finger being on the first string, it's going to be on the second string. Now I've got a D. Move that whole shape to the fifth fret. This is what it sounds like when I put it together. shape and I'm moving it to the top three strings on the 12th fret. Actually the first string was the 11th fret. Here's my A7 shape on the 12th fret up here. And you can play around with that. Watch this. So many different things and I'm playing one thing then the next thing because really what I do is just you know you get this energy and a feel and that's what I go with I try not to be so technical and I don't want you to be technical well here's how you do this so play that here's how you do this and play that and then when I go see you play or anybody watches you perform it might sound the notes will kind of be there but you're playing as a technical player as opposed to somebody's expressing and feeling and then energy is there and I make mistakes, folks. I mean, come on, I'll be the first one to admit. I'll, sometimes I'll hit, whoa, it's okay. And sometimes I can make a mistake and I kind of like it. You know, the, you might sit there and hear the song or watch me play the song and think that was really cool what he just did. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I didn't really mean to do that, but I like it. And I might even come back to it or incorporate it in another song I write down the road. But um, I think that's really what establishes the distinction of somebody who, who plays the guitar and somebody who's a true musician, you know, a true musician. And that's really diving into the instrument, getting the feel of the instrument. Don't think chords, think shapes, think rhythm, think counting the four, if that's the timing of the song, and make that happen. And I know I've gotten way off the track over Dust My Broom, but I'm just trying to explain to you that when I play the tune, there really is no rhyme. I mean, it's a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four beat. It's a one, four, five blues progression. What does one, four, five mean? Um, eight notes in scale, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, te, do, ba, ba, ba. We all know eight notes, right? One, four, five means I'm taking the first, the do, the four, and the five, and I use those in my blues progression, those chords, whatever they are. In a C scale, it would be a C, F, and G. Uh, if it's an A, uh, e, in a key of E, a one, four, five would be E, A, and B. Um, in a G, it would be G, C, and D. Okay, so that's what we mean. You probably heard that a lot. I know a lot of you already know what that is, but there's probably a lot of viewers who don't. Uh, so that's what a one, four, five progression is. And I'll play one, four, five. And I'm gonna play the whole tune here and uh, you know, from the beginning, just play with it. And then uh, you can stop this video, I recommend stopping the video, rewind it, play it section by section by section and watch what I'm doing. Knowing that when I'm doing it, I'm pretty much just making it up at that moment and that's what I'm presenting to you all right and and you do likewise I mean it's good that you develop the agility of being able to move up and down um, the guitar neck and, and do so freely and landing on the next shape in time one two three four one two three four and every one is when you're landing on the chord right you're not going one two three four one two three you're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, right? So that just means playing it over and over again. Not practicing, playing it. Make it mean something when you do it. One, two, three, four. Watch this. One, two, three, four.
So what your job now is to go back on this YouTube video and do section by section play it over this one little section play it again. What's he doing? What is he doing? What's how am I how am I moving from one shape to the next shape and in what sequence? Where the breaks come in. The finger picking part of it, and I want to spend just a couple minutes on that, is really <laughs> actually on here, watch, one, two, three, four, the one is not when my thumb's hitting the E string, the one is when I'm playing this, now if I were to move that shape around, watch this, it's like this, you, my apologies if I have, but um, I just want to kind of express that um, it's not really the technical, here's how you do, and I don't like those here's how you do uh, songs, you know, here's how the artist did it exactly. It's good to know the technique, the sections of the tune, the, how certain uh, chord shapes were expressed. How did they attach themselves to the lyric line? How, what, what did the influence have uh, of those shapes and how they attached themselves to the lyric line at that moment? of the whole song itself. What, what impact did that make? You know, what, 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 is, what is that difference if I play an A here, or if I play an A here? I'm out. Uh, again, Andy Kimball. Go to lessons at andykimball.com. And I'll say this probably maybe the fourth time. Repeat this video a bunch of times and just stop it, stop it, stop it. This isn't about Andy Kimball showing you what I can do. That's not what this is about. This is about me showing you some things that I can incorporate in a tune at any given time uh, to make the tune happen, to make a difference in the lives of the people who are experiencing the song with me. It's not me showing him how I can do the song, or here's me playing the song, or it doesn't Andy, ooh, that sounds so good. That's not what it's about. It's about making a difference for you and the people who listen, the people who can enjoy and appreciate, and, and, the, and the music that I create, what kind of impact does that have on their lives at that moment? That's what this is about, okay? And that's what it should be about for you. And that'll, that'll when you start thinking and approaching music in that way, in that manner, you, watch what happens to your playing. Watch what happens. Okay? See you next time, folks. Thanks so much for stopping in. And remember, don't practice the guitar. Play the guitar. We're going to see you out there. Take care.